hey y'all so welcome back to another makeup video so i'm gonna begin with my primer my elf primer this is actually my favorite one i am still a beginner so i am still learning as i go the more i do on my makeup the more i'm learning so just bear with me but if you're a beginner too then these are just some easy tips that maybe can help you so actually you want to start with a clean face before you put your primer on very important whatever you normally do in your natural skincare routine is what you're going to do and i just let my face hydrate so that when i do apply my primer i'm not doing it on a dry face because that's literally the foundation to your makeup in the base so it's very important so while i'm letting that dry i'm going to start and do my eyebrows that's first for me that's what i do first i have this elf eyebrow gel and this is the pin so they have one where you can have it's the um the eyebrow gel in a tube i have that one too but i like this one better because it's already on the brush for you so i just kind of clean out my eyebrows so that they're all together so that when i apply my brow pencil which is what this is it's easy so i got a brown because you don't want to do black if you don't want like jet black eyebrows if you want a natural look dark brown is the way to go because really your hair is dark brown anyways but that's another story for later so yeah i'm just gonna go lightly so i learned that you don't want to start at the very end you want to kind of start in the middle so that when you brush it out it gives a natural look and you don't want to do harsh lines you want to go as light as possible so you definitely want to make sure you're taking your time on this part for sure so now I'm gonna go with my concealer. I actually got it from Sephora, and I like to do a flat brush for when I trace my eyebrows because you can use a flat brush or if you're like a skinnier pencil as well, like more like a pencil style, but I like the flat brush because it helps me line my eyebrows as easy as possible. So I just apply a little bit on my hand and make sure you go in between with some sort of setting spray. So that's what I just applied before I actually put the concealer on my eyes. I want to make sure that, um, you know, I kind of have something to bro break up the product so the product isn't super stiff on my face. So as you can see, you want to make sure you have it flat in the right direction as well. That's important. So I just pretty much trace my eyebrows and yeah. When doing makeup, it's very important to know what brush to use on what. So I try to watch a lot of other tutorial videos with the girls that are actually experts to kind of tell me which brush to use. And actually, they have some brushes that will have the label at the end. But this brush is the one that I like to use for brushing out and blending out that concealer. It's good to let your eyebrows sit for about 10 minutes, maybe five at the least if you're in a rush before you actually blend it out. That way, it'll give a more natural look as possible. And when you blend it out, as stated before, you want to make sure that you're patting the product. You don't want to, like, rub it at all. You want to just pat in slow sections, and it'll eventually blend out as good as you want it to look. So now I'm going to go with my foundation. This is a very inexpensive foundation, y'all. All of the stuff I'm using is inexpensive. I just so happen to have that Sephora makeup, but I want to go back to Sephora. But either way, this is from Walmart, y'all. It's about $10 or less. Very affordable foundation. My cousin, she does makeup, and she told me to make sure that you test your foundation on your neck. Because someone told me the forearm, but that didn't work for me. So again, this is another e.l.f. product. Elf is very affordable, by the way, so that's why I've been using a lot of their products lately. Maybe soon I'll do a full Elf only um, makeup tutorial, but for now, that's Elf Halo Glow. I'm so in love with this product, y'all. Now, before I put any foundation, I put the Halo Glow underneath my foundation because, as stated in the name, it kind of gives that extra glow. And as you can see, it kind of brightens my skin. Therefore, sometimes you can use the Halo Glow as a foundation if you would like to. But in this case, I just use it as an undertone for the foundation. It's really whatever you're feeling for the day. But this is a nighttime makeup look, so I didn't want it to be too glowy. But it definitely brightens that skin up, as you can see. So now I'm going to actually go in and add my foundation on top of the Halo Glow. As you can see, I'm doing it with my fingers. 
I like I said, I've been watching a lot of videos, y'all. And word on the street is that it's very good to blend your foundation with your finger because the warmth from your finger actually allows it to blend better with your skin. That's what someone told me that does a professional makeup and I watch a lot of videos as well. So, and I actually have noticed the difference when I brush it, blend it out with my finger first and then I'll go and do the brush and then I'll go and actually use a sponge and everything as well. But it's personal preference, it's whatever you would prefer, but I definitely advise you to try it if you would like. So of course you can see I'm blending out that foundation. It's starting to look really good. So I'm actually gonna go in with the sponge after. This is a really good sponge. I actually forget where I got it from, but it's really good for you to kind of set that foundation in your skin all the way. I feel like it gives it that final setting versus the brushes that I have. It kind of has like that rough look to it. And the sponge has a smoother, foundation to it so when i'm patting it in as you can see it's starting to look more natural and not as glowy and like i don't like that wet look i like more of like a matte look so yeah now i'm gonna go in with my concealer again this time for my under eye as you can see you don't want to do it right under your eye someone told me that i watched like I said on these videos they say don't do it right under your eye. Kind of give it a little bit of space. So you pat it out. You're gonna the concealer is going to spread when you're patting it out with your brush. So you don't want to do it right under your eye, or you're gonna have buildup right under your eye. So yeah. And as you can see, I put a little bit on my chin. I don't really like to do too much on the bright, bright on my chin. Really, I haven't really learned to kind of master that look. I just like the way it looks under my eyes and that's just where I stay because I actually have a beauty mark on my face it's I don't think you can really see it on that side it's on the other side on um, the opposite side facing the wall but I don't want to put too much makeup around my chin because I don't want to cover that markup oh yeah you can see it kind of but yeah I don't want to cover that markup because I actually really like it I used to didn't like it but I like it a lot now so I don't want to cover it, so I just try to just do a little dot at the bottom of my chin. But that's just a side note for me personally when I'm doing my makeup. If you have certain marks and stuff that you want to cover or don't want to cover, you don't have to apply as much makeup on those marks. I feel like certain enhancements, the makeup should just enhance you. I don't think you should cover up some natural features that you have that you may like. Or if you have scars and stuff that you don't like, as well, which the makeup is already gonna do in personal opinion. So yeah, I'm just gonna go with my sponge and kind of blend it in a little bit more because I want it to look blended, but I don't like too bright of an under eye because once you add that setting powder, the setting powder really brightens it up and kind of gives it that matte look that you're looking for. So like I said, personally, I don't like too bright on my under eye. I know I've said it a lot, but yeah.
this is actually my favorite part. I love this airspun setting powder. I'm actually going to start trying another brand though. Um, but that's neither here nor there. So for now, airspun is where it's at. It's very, very affordable, about $6. And I'm going to go with my powder puff and set my eyebrows first. My god sister put me onto this, y'all. And it's such a game changer to add that setting powder to your eyebrows. Like I said, I didn't even know that that was a thing until she told me. So shout out to you for that. And of course, I'm going to add some to my under eye. I don't like to leave it too long. The longer you leave the setting powder, the brighter it's going to be, if that makes sense. So I don't like it to look too bright and too white, so I don't like to leave it that long. I like to kind of put it under there, let it stay for about five seconds, and then take it off. Like I said, I'm still a beginner, so I'm still mastering and kind of learning what works for me and what doesn't. And that's how makeup is, like with anything. It just practice makes perfect, so over time you'll learn your face and what you know enhancements you actually want for your face so for me i don't like to leave my setting powder too long like i said um so watch another video and kind of learn maybe a better way to do it but for now this is just how i do it after i let it sit a little bit i just blend it in <music> I changed the lighting just to make sure my makeup was still looking good. I turned the lights off and just had my ring light. And I actually should have done my makeup like that the whole time because it actually looks good. I didn't think it looked that good at the time, but I feel like it looks really good. So now I'm gonna add my blush. I love this blush. This is very, I'm not even sure it was gifted to me. My friend got it for me for my birthday. So I'm not sure where she got it from, but I love the different blush tones. Eventually I do wanna try a liquid one, but for now the powder blush is the easiest blush for me to use. I did go for more of a redder blush this time versus the pinker one because I did want it to show. But of course, you don't want to do too much on the blush. You want to have like a natural rosy cheek. You don't want to do like too bright. This is a nighttime makeup look again. So maybe if I was doing a daytime vibe, I would probably go for a more rosy. But yeah, for now, I just kind of did a light blush. shadow i got this palette from sephora probably about a year or two ago i need to re-up on it but i just like to do a natural brown color i'm not really too good at eyeshadow i'm not good at all at it actually i just know how to just apply the eyeshadow on the eyelid and just one solid color is what i go for sometimes if i'm feeling you know fancy or something i'll kind of do like a liner in the corner but for now just keeping it simple doing that natural brown so this is my favorite part the lip liner lip combo so i'm gonna go in with the brown liner and i'm gonna go thin i don't want to do too thick because it spreads so you don't want to do too thick well at least i don't want to do too thick because it's gonna spread and this is actually a pencil i like a nice pencil for my lip liner i feel like it just looks so much better so i'm gonna go on top of the brown very lightly with this pink color and i feel like it just kind of gives that color that you're looking for it really just looks really cute like i said i want to keep everything thin because i'm gonna go on top with my favorite lip gloss i know y'all be seeing these everywhere the nyx but it really is the key they're about six dollars so if you can get you at least one to start that's all you need girl so yeah i'm gonna add that right in the middle and just kind of mock it like you don't want to like rub it you just want to mop it and then i'm gonna go on top with my lip plumper lip gloss y'all this um you can get this from amazon i actually got it off tiktok shop but you can get it from amazon too um like I said, this is so uh, such a game changer. My favorite lip plumper, lip plumper lip gloss. So now I'm gonna go in with my one size setting spray, y'all. I've been so itching to use this setting spray. Uh, 
This is actually my new favorite setting spray. As you can see, I'm just going in a circular motion. The spray is so light, y'all. I didn't even know if I was using it right. I'm like, is it on there? Did I apply enough? Like, it didn't even feel like it was like coming out or on my face at all. So I probably uh, didn't have to go in as much as I did with the setting spray. But I did, and the setting spray is, this setting spray, once you apply it, your makeup is not going to move. As you can see, this is the final look, super cute. So this is how my makeup came out. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. I feel like it came out so cute. I was just kind of talking and saying how my makeup is not moving. Like my skin, it felt like skin, super smooth, super cute. This one size is such a game changer. Uh, I love it so much. So, yeah, I hope y'all enjoyed this step-by-step -step tutorial. See y'all on the next video. And don't stop until you're where you want to be. Like I said, I'm not professional. I haven't even got my um, A1, that girl makeup look yet, down pack. But I'm still learning and I'm still growing each and every day. So, yeah. See y'all later on the next video.